So there's been this tweet that's been floating around the internet over the last day or so where someone was charged $291 to cancel their Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. That is a lot. So today we're gonna to be taking a deep dive into the fine print of the cancellation policy and the terms of service and translating some of that lawyer speak into English so you know what you're signing up for. Hey, it's me, Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And today's video is a little bit different than what I usually do. I'm not talking about a cool new feature or what awesome thing you could create with the software that I'm talking about. Instead, I'm gonna be talking about the boring stuff. Hopefully I can keep it interesting and keep everything understandable. It might be a little bit dry, but I think it's important to know. A lot of it, I didn't know. So taking a look at that tweet, basically what it's pointing out is that Adobe charges a cancellation fee if you're closing your creative count before your year long contract is up. Now the comments on Twitter, as you would imagine, not all of them, safe for work. So for the first part of the video, I'm not gonna really share my opinion, I'm just gonna go into the pricing plan as it stands now. So as you probably know, Adobe has a subscription model. What you can pay for and how you can build that subscription model is pretty broad. There's a lot of options here. There are different tiers. For example, if you're an individual, that's one price level. If you're a business, another price level. If you're a student or teacher, you get a price level and schools and universities, they can buy all of this in bulk. So let's look at the individual tier. You can get all of the apps for $53 a month or you can just grab one app at a time and the price for those vary. Some are only $10 a month, some are $21 a month. It's kind of funny because when you start to dig, you can see that it costs $21 a month for Photoshop, but if you get Photoshop and Lightroom together, it's only $10 a month. So let's take a look at the all apps plan. This is everything, every single app that Adobe has. This is what I personally use. I'm actually paying for two Creative Cloud accounts right now now because it's cheaper to go that route than it is to get a business account. There's some additional add-ons like the stock photo plan. That's another $30 a month. But some of the things included here are really, really good. If you use this package to its fullest, you can get a lot of value here. I was a graphic designer for years and the Adobe font package is a tremendous value because buying fonts individually is crazy expensive. So when we look here, there are three payment options here in the US. You can sign up for an annual plan that's billed monthly, or you can pay in one lump sum, which you'll save about $36 a year over the course of your term. The other option is to go contract free. Now that's $80 a month. That's obviously significantly more, $27 more. What this page doesn't have is a link to their cancellation policy or any kinds of terms of service. If you wanna find that out, you have to keep digging and following the sales funnel. It's actually located on the very last page of the purchase an account section. This is what it looks like on the page. Here I am, I'm blowing it up so you can see what their cancellation policy link looks like. If you wanna follow along but don't know how to find this page, probably the best way to get to it is go to Google and search for Adobe subscription and cancellation terms. Now there is some good news here. If you cancel your account within 14 days of starting your subscription for, for any of these, you're gonna be fully refunded. Now that month to month plan that's $80 is pretty straightforward. You'll be charged monthly until you decide to cancel your account. Once you do, you're, you're free and clear. You owe nothing. There is no cancellation policy there. Where a lot of people seem to get in trouble are these annual plans that are being billed monthly. Here's what you will be charged. Should you cancel after 14 days, you will be charged a lump sum amount of 50% of your remaining contract obligation. And your service will continue until the end of that month's billing period. So what does this mean? If there's two months left in your contract, you're gonna pay 50% of both of those months, which means you'll pay $53 to cancel with two months left on your contract. Worst case scenario, there's 11 months left on your contract. And in that case, you'll be charged $291.50. And if I had had to guess that looks like what happened to the person who wrote that tweet. So during that signup process, what are they disclosing at the end? Here are some of the terms and what it reads. By clicking agree and subscribe, you agree you will be charged $52.99 plus tax monthly. And at the end of your one year term, your subscription will automatically renew monthly until you cancel. Price subject to change, no annual commitment required after the first year. The silver lining here is that if you have had an account for over a year, you're in the clear. You're not gonna be charged a cancellation fee after that first year. But if you quit at any point in time, go back and sign up again sometime down the road, that one year cancellation penalty period starts up all over again. All right, let's check out that other annual plan. If you pay in full for the first 14 days, 
you could get your money back. After that 14 days, you cannot get your money back. You can't even get a portion of that back. Once those 14 days are over, it's done. If you cancel at that point, your subscription will continue until the end of that year. If you don't cancel, your subscription will be auto-renewed at the end of the year for that full year term price. The terms don't say anything about whether you have a 14 day grace period after that second renewal. I'm not too sure about that. Also, it doesn't say anything about whether you can get your money back after that 14 days, after that second renewal. I would assume no, but, but I'm not sure, it's not clear. That's for individual accounts. What about academic accounts? Students who only need it for maybe a semester? Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news here. First is that you only have two options as a student. One, pay for a full year upfront, or two, pay the monthly cost for a full year plan. There is no month to month option like there is on the individual plan. The same cancellation policy applies upfront for students. If you only need three or four months of this, you're still gonna have to pay that 50% cancellation fee for the rest of the year if you bought that full year upfront you're not gonna get a refund. What about that Adobe stock photo option? This is an add-on that they promote during the checkout process. Does that work the same way? And it appears that it does. If you buy the annual plan, you have bought an annual plan. So I thought the cancellation would be the same, but I wasn't 100% sure. I did some Googling and it looks like it is. People have been charged 50% of that annual fee to cancel their stock accounts as well. But it also seems that some people have managed to get out of paying that stock fee by complaining about it publicly on Twitter and tagging Adobe's customer service page. Also, some people said that they were able to cancel it by switching to a different stock plan and then using the 14-day trial to cancel without penalty. That was a four-year-old post. I'm not sure that loophole is still around, so be, be wary of that one. Whew, so... Um, I don't, I don't really want to rant about this, but I, I do want to talk about this, um, partially because this, this kills me. Adobe has so many great people working on so many really good products every day to make them better and better. And a lot of that just gets undercut by these kind of business policies. Also worth noting is that that original tweet that I referenced at the beginning of this thing was deleted right before I started recording this. As you can see, it was getting a lot of attention. It was up for the better part of a day. And I've seen people say online that if you make enough noise on social media, call out Adobe on Twitter, they will give you a break on that fee. That's great if you have a following and can make some noise, but that's not that's not really customer service. That's that's damage control. I wanna make it clear, I've I've always defended Adobe's price structure. Not their cancellation policy, not at all, no. But the idea of a monthly subscription price for software, that's, that's a really unpopular position to take. I know, flame me down in the comments, I get it. I believe the good software costs money, period. It just does. It takes people and expertise and everything to, to support all of that. There is a place in the market for expensive software, and I personally find a lot of value in it. I use Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, uh, I Animate, Fresco. I get a lot of value out of those plans. I also understand why a lot of creators can't afford it and why they're frustrated by those really high prices. I totally understand that, which is why I get so excited here on this channel about software like Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer Publisher. I mean, how many videos have I made about Procreate on this channel. That's literally the best $6 I have ever spent. I think they charge $10 now. I've made a lot of videos about free drawing programs, Krita, Medibank, Vectornator. I've always thought that there is room in the creative ecosystem for really high-end expensive pro apps and also really solid open source apps and everything in between. When I look at this cancellation fee and, and more important how hidden it is, it drives me nuts because they're choosing short-term profits over the long-term health of their brand. When I was coming up as a designer, Adobe was the good guy. They were making InDesign. It was so much better than Quark Express. They were making Illustrator, which added a lot of features that you couldn't find in Macromedia Freehand. We liked Adobe because Adobe made good products. They were expensive. They were very expensive, but they were good. It's because of practices like these that Adobe isn't even given the benefit of the doubt anymore. People didn't see Photoshop for the iPad as an exciting step towards the future of Photoshop and Instead, they saw it as an unfinished product. There was zero benefit of the doubt. 
These things are related, how your business operates and how people view your products. A lot of great stuff that Adobe does gets lost behind all of that negativity. I've been diving deeper into Adobe Animate over the last few months for my other channel, my animated learn how to draw series. I love it. Character designer. I wish I had more time to jump in and play with that software. It rocks. I genuinely like Fresco. I like the direction the app is going. Same with the iPad version of Illustrator. What really gets me are the student plans. These are your future customers. I don't think Adobe realizes what other companies pay for customer acquisition. Adobe has an entire industry pipeline set up to deliver them new customers on an annual basis. And how do they treat them? They give them a student discount, but then they don't let them cancel, so they gotta carry that discount to term. That sucks. This is how phone companies operate. This is how monopolies operate, because they know that every other phone carrier is doing the same thing so they can get away with it too. I imagine Adobe came up with this fee when they were the only game in town. The problem is, is they're no longer the only game in town, and that erodes their chances of bringing new customers into the fold. For the price of a cancellation fee, I could get an entire design suite? Sign me up. When you look at services that are really easy to either pause or cancel, something like Netflix, they do that because they want you to come back. Nobody who gets slapped with a cancellation fee ever willingly comes back. What do you think? Who am I fooling? I know exactly what the comment section's gonna look like. It's gonna look like a fire. Anyway, you can still let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.